jetpack fever took off with the first public flight in 1961. Since then, everyone's been asking, where's my jetpack? Back then, they were loud, expensive, hard to fly, and only capable of 30-second flights. In 50 years, nothing has changed. Our H202 model is very similar to the models from the 60s. They use the same technology. Nick and Jet PI's owner, Troy Widgery, want to push the envelope. My personality is, it's to push it. I want to prove to myself and, and show the world what's really possible with human flight. Something that's impossible, really. So you need devices in order to aid the fight against gravity. That's what life is about, living on the edge. Nick designed his own jetpack and has flown over 200 flights. But that's nothing compared to the pilot he admires most, Bill Souter. Between 1964 and 2012, I've logged or made over 1,000 flights. Soaring high above the Brands Hatch racing circuit is Bill Souter demonstrating the rocket belt. Bill Souter is an absolute legend. He put the rocket belt and jetpack on the scene and kept it there for 20 or 30 years, and he's still involved. Bill is one of a handful of jetpack pilots from the 1960s. One of the models he flew is in the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum. It's known as the Bell Rocket Belt No. 2. The correct name for all of the current flying jetpacks is Rocket Belt. They are not jets. They are rockets. They are rocket propelled. Rocket Belt technology was starting to take off when Bill joined Bell Aerosystems in 1964. When I was 19 years old, a neighbor, Wendell Moore, had invented the Rocket Belt. And they were looking for a pilot that age to fulfill a contract obligation with the US Army. Wendell Moore began work on the first Rocket Belt in 1953. The original uh, idea of the Buck Rogers backpack, Rocket Belt jetpack, was military to get soldiers over obstacles and minefields and you know rivers and streams and whatnot. People were fascinated by the idea. In October 1961, President Kennedy saw a demonstration. And later, it was flown at the Pentagon in front of 3,000 military personnel. The Big Brass saw the potential for the battlefield. The military asked Moore how long it would take to train a draft-age man to learn to fly the rocket belt. Bill got the job. It took me 60 tether flights before I was, you know, deemed fit for free flight. Learning to control the throttle and adjust the nozzles for steering is the hardest part of piloting a jetpack. Once you more or less get the hang of free flight and get comfortable in it, you start to relax and you start to observe things. I no longer thought of it as the machine. It was as though I had the power of flight, just as a bird does. But birds are born to fly. People aren't. <laughs> 